Welcome to this extra video of our jet engine series, where we'll implement a max temperature control for our combustor. Let's dive right in! 3, 2, 1, top 3, 2, 1, half. The Flight Test Engineering Channel. Okay, so starting from the last notebook that we had at, in episode 9, we're going to add a few things here. The first thing we, we want to add is what is going to be the maximum temperature in our combustion chamber. And we're going to set it to 1200 for our vintage engine, which is fairly, fairly reasonable. If you are modeling a modern engine, then this is going to be more or less 18 to 1900. That would be a fair number, reaching maybe 2100 on very, very cutting edge technology for this date here, 2024. And what's going to be the strategy that we're going to adopt here for, to control our engine uh, maximum temperature? We're going to calculate what is the temperature that we reach in the fluid when we add the fuel. And then we're going to check if this temperature is going to be higher or, or not from this maximum temperature. If it is higher, what we're going to do is we're going to throttle back the engine artificially, just like a fadeback would do. So we're going to create a variable that will multiply our throttle setting by a fraction which will actually throttle back the engine and add less fuel to the mixture. So let's, let's implement that in our calculate thrust function. So let's scroll down to our calculate thrust function. Where is that? And then let's find where the combustion takes place. Right there, the combustor. So what have I added here? First, I have added a new variable that will control our loop. So it's going to be called T loop. And we set it to true to start with. This is going to be the flag that we set on or off to get out of the loop. This next variable here, T, T throttle, we're going to set it to one because this is going to be the multiplier that will throttle back our engine in case we reach the temperature limit. And then this next variable, T throttle limit, is going to be the lower limit that we can throttle back the engine. So let's say that we can throttle back maximum 50%. So the next thing is that we are going to add, of course, our while T loop, where all T loop is true. This is all the stuff that we had before. We calculate first what is the fuel quantity that we want to add. But in this case, notice that we're going to multiply by our T throttle because we want to, again, throttle back if we reach the temperature limit. Then we, it's, it's all the same that as we had before. We set the equivalency, we calculate the mixture fraction, and then we iterate on the cold fuel air mixture until we have convergence um, to calculate what the dp over p, right? We're calculating how much energy we're losing from the fluid here on this function. And here, if we have convergence, we set the Mach number, and here's where we burn. We equilibrate the, the mixture, as we said before. And this is where we're going to check for our loop. So if our gas that we just calculated by equilibrating the mixture, if our gas temperature is higher than our limit, then we throttle back by 0.1%. So we set our T throttle to T throttle minus 0.001. Then we check if our T throttle is less than the limit, the lower limit that we set, then we stop the loop by saying that it's false and it's not feasible to reach this temperature by throttling it back too much. Else, if we don't meet this condition as well, then it means that our temperature is within the limit and we are not in uh, breaching the lower limits. So we also stop the loop by setting the T loop to false. So then here, if we see that we throttle back the engine, we just print out a message saying that we reached the T max and then we reduce by the throttle by so much uh, for, by this amount. And then we set the properties of our gas to our collector list here. And then we propagate the combustion gas composition downstream. And, and we follow the, the same procedures that we had before. So no changes from, from here down. Okay, I have run this notebook and just to show you what we get. When we, we calculate all of our, our graphs to see how thrust variates, with Mach number and altitude, then we're going to see that we reach the T max and we reduce, actually have to reduce the throttle. And we can see on the graph here, let me just zoom out a little bit, 
that you see this is uh, sea level. We are temperature limited at sea level. That's why this curve flattens considerably here. Same thing at 5,000 feet. And as we climb, then we don't reach the temperature limit anymore, which makes sense on our jet engine. At 75% throttle, we don't reach the limit. So we have the same graphs. And with 50%, of course, no, no limits reached. And the same thing happens when we calculate our TSFC graph here. You see that the curves are squished as we are lower in altitude and fairly flat on the side. And you can see that the thrust, again, is the same thing that we had before. It's temperature limited uh, on lower altitudes, as we can see by, right there. And there you have it. This was a quick video to show you how we could implement a maximum temperature limiter in our combustor. And there are other improvements that you could think of. And I'd love to hear it from you. If you have an idea, just push a PR on our GitHub. Thank you and see you in the next video.